Hi everyone, Scott here, and this is a must-watch video for every single landlord, letting agent, property investor in the country. So if, if you're involved in property in any way, then you need to understand the contents of this video and go and research it for yourself. So a few days ago, I was at a landlord networking event and I was the speaker. So I got some time, 40 minutes with the audience, and I asked everyone in the audience, who has read this report, Land for the Many, from Labour? Not one person put their hands up. And then I asked, who has heard of this report, Land for the Many, from Labour? And again, not one person in that room of networkers that were all landlords put their hands up. So I think it's really, really important to share what this is going to mean to you as landlords. Essentially, I suppose if Labour gets in, then they implement this if they're true to their word, and it is game over for landlords and the buy-to-let sector. So, to start this video, I'm not political, I don't, I don't care about politics in any way, I don't know anything about it, all I'm doing is literally quoting what is in this report, Land for the Many by Labour. So this isn't in any way saying one is better than the other, Everything I'm going to read out, it's, I've written it in quotes on the back because it's literal quotes from this report. And the landlords that I've spoken to don't, um, don't know that this exists, but 50% of the landlords at that meeting would have voted Labour. They would be vo voting for their own demise. They would be voting for their income stream to essentially die. So they were unaware of it, which is why this video is important. So I'm going to rattle through some of the things here. Google land for the many labour. Look at it yourself, fact check it. Don't take my word for it, although I am literally lifting things and saying it in quotes. So the very first page makes it clear what their intentions are. We want to discourage land and housing to be treated as financial assets. They don't want people to have buy-to-lets. And that's clear as you go through. They want to end the buy-to-let frenzy. And again, not only is ending the buy-to-let frenzy, I'll put it in quotes, but it's in bold, just to make sure you really know where they stand. They want to put a cap on rent increases. So essentially, the government is going to tell you what rents you can charge your tenants and what increases you can make. And let's face it, they're not going to be giving you massive allowances for rent increases. The whole purpose of this is to destroy the buy-to-let sector and stop property prices creeping up. So the cap on rent increases is a big thing that you need to understand. The next thing they want buy-to-let mortgages to be firmly, firmly regulated and restricted. So the lending that you get now, they're going to put measures in place to make it much, much harder to get those buy-to-let mortgages. They're going to encourage a shift in bank lending away from real estate. So that's at the Bank of England, England level and all other banks are going to be discouraged from lending against property. The loan to value uh, is going to be tightened. So the max loan to value is going to be tightened. So maybe you're quite happy with your 25% your deposits. Then this report says that it's going to be increased. So your 25% could go to whatever the government say. So that's going to be controlled by the government, not necessarily the mortgage companies. They will be in control of that, or at least drive policy. And uh, this is a massive big one for landlords. They're going to do away with council tax, which the tenant pays, and they're going to make a progressive property tax. And who by law needs to make that pay that progressive property tax? You, the landlord. So obviously the first thing landlords would do would put the rent up. If you're legally forced to pay the council tax or progressive property tax as it will be called, then you would need to adjust the rents accordingly. But you can't because of already controlled rent increases. So they'll take the council tax payment away from tenants, put it onto owners and then stop the owners increasing the rent to cover that charge. So again, it's all in here. Very, very clearly laid out paragraph by paragraph. Second homes are going to be taxed at a much higher rate. So this affects buy-to-let landlords and holiday homes. And again, there's lots of stuff about holiday homes and enforced planning. So it's going to greatly affect that sector as well. But I'm not focused on that to keep the video short. Capital gains tax from investment properties is also going to be increased. So if you're selling buy-to-let properties, anything that's not a principal home, you'll be paying a lot more capital gains tax there as well. So they're going to increase tax for properties and companies. Again, the strategy has been let's avoid Section 24 by putting them into companies. So it did look to me from this report that property companies are going to be taxed as well. So all the moving and financial planning we've done is definitely going to be affected by this. 
A nice quote that I put in was, we don't want everyone owning tennis courts, swimming pools, play barns, whatever that is, and art collections. So again, there is a perception that as landlords own swimming pools, tennis courts, play barns, and arts coll art collections. They take up too much space, this report says. So what we're gonna do is stop all that and make all those things communal. We want these things to be public. So if you have space, that you've got tennis courts and, and your own land, nothing to do with buy to let, then perhaps that space should be public. So there's quite a big section in that that's quite a humanist reading. They want to stop the eight billion a year of housing benefit flowing into the hands of private landlords. So they say it's eight billion a year, so they're going to prohibit that in some way. And um, you can read that for yourselves, but eight billion pounds, imagine your housing benefit gets stopped paying to you because they don't want it going to private landlords. And there's talk of how all, so all housing would be social housing. This is a nice one as well, which is a bonus. Uh, compensation to the tenant if you're a victim. So if they do antisocial behaviour, then they don't get a compensation. But if you wanted to sell the property, move back in, do renovations, if the, the tenant, you would need to prove that there's a no fault by the tenant or you would need to give them compensation. So if you rented your property out for say a year to move back in, you would need to pay the tenant to get your own property back. Again, not making it up, it's in here. And they would want to return housing power to local authorities. So there's lots more in that report there where they want to give the power back to local authorities. So I've focused on a couple of elements here. I haven't cherry picked the, the, the stuff that makes this report look bad. There's other stuff about agriculture and land and lots of other things, lots of stuff in planning that I just didn't have time. That's a whole page. So I haven't cherry picked the bad bits out of this. That is just some of the things that I think is relevant. So. Again, all you might watch this video and love the sound of all that. That might sound amazing. That might go with your political agenda and beliefs, and that's totally cool. But my point of the video isn't to say it's right or wrong. It's to say if you are a landlord and you are unaware of this information, you desperately need to go and read that report and fully, fully understand the consequences of what will happen if the, the, that report gets put into practice. So go and Google it, I'll try and put a link or message me and I'll, I'll, I'll send you an email of the report. So again, if you are a landlord, I've found that very, very few landlords are aware of this. So you need to be because it's going to be the future of your legacy and the things that you can leave to your children. So go, land for the many, labour, have a look at it yourself and comment below if you have read it because it would be quite encouraging because so many people haven't read this and so many people were going to vote to get that party in. And again, not political, it's not to say you should or you shouldn't. The things in this video might resonate with you and you might love um, for that to happen, but for the large majority of buy-to-let landlords, that is going to be massively detrimental.